Dragon Quest XI. Mm. So, um, the art style of that is the exact same. The guy who does Dragon Ball Z does the art style of Dragon Quest, and he's done it since the first Dragon Quest. And with Dragon Ball Fighters, as I've said, it's like a 2D game. It looks like a 2D game, but it's 3D. This has the exact same art style, but it's fully 3D. It's like if you if you remember RPGs back in the day where you'd have like early 3D era RPGs where you'd have textures that are meant to replace well they're meant to show off actual depth. So like let's say this guy has all this all these things in his costume to represent say a mo like goggles on him or whatever and it's just a flat texture with a lot of, it's just a flat plane with a lot of texture painted on it. Like Dragon Quest 11 goes the opposite direction and just models everything and makes everything look like you know it would look if you were living in that world if you get what I mean so while Dragon Ball Fighters has this completely 2D aesthetic Dragon Quest looks completely 3D and it's just really nice to see that type of difference <clears throat> from the same author or artist but the game itself is also just really good. It's like if you enjoy Japanese RPGs, like I do once in a while, I've sort of fallen out of love with a lot of them because they're sort of just the same. Sure. But this is just comfort food. I played about 60, 70, 80 hours of it and I was like, ah, oh, this is fun. Mm. And it felt like the best RPG in a while. Probably the last really fun RPG I had fun with was Persona 5 before that, at least Japanese ones. But yeah, that was a it was, that was just a solid game this year. Yeah, I, I it's one of those things where I don't um, I've never really played uh, the Dragon Quest games or anything or any or anything really that deeply with his art style involved. Um, I played like some like I remember you back in the day Budokai and that like I was on it, but but um, never really gone too deep into it. But like I love that art style a lot. Like even even from an, as an outsider who isn't particularly into those games or whatever, I love the art style. Um, and like you say, we've had a couple of examples this year of just it being nailed like completely and utterly in, in in such like vivid ways that it's been super 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 enjoyable. I would recommend that game. <laughs> it's fun. Like just it's like it's not a turn your brain off type of mm -hmm. game, but it's like how do I explain it? Let's say you you have downtime between two different things that you're yeah. doing. And it's like, you know what, today I just want to play this for a while. It's like a solid 8 out of 10, mm. and it's just a bunch of fun. Very Everything is extremely traditional, like most Dragon Quest games. Normally I have a lot of problems with, and I think is probably leading to the death of Japanese RPGs in general, where it's like, they keep trying to reclaim this idea of, hey, it's old and traditional, so we need to keep doing it. It's like, don't do yeah. that. Do, do other things. I mean, it makes the genre feel like it's been stuck in the same state it's been. It. It's, it's it's stuck in the PlayStation One era yeah. almost. So it's like for the past three generations, they don't know how to make a better JRPG, or like they don't want to experiment because the fan base is very traditional. Mm. And normally, I have a really big problem with it because I like things to try different new things. I like Final Fantasy because every single game in that franchise is completely different from the last one. Like 15 gets a ton of shit because it's like, it's not turn based, but that game was really fun nice. and it was very different from everything that came before. I hate 13, but as per usual, they try different things and I appreciate the fact that they try new mm. things. And normally I would hold it against this game for just being completely traditional, but it just, it's just really heartwarming to play and I would recommend it. Really. I think perhaps as well, like when you're talking about the idea of like just stuff like being innovative or invent or, or changing up formulas and stuff like that, maybe because I'm so into PES <laughs> and play it like so consistently and like there are differences between PES and obviously it's one of those things where if you're super into it, you notice the differences, but from the outside view, you're like, this is the same game as it was last year. What the hell are you doing? Maybe that's why I'm so like, <laughs> avidly against like non like innovative things maybe that's why i'm so like for everything changing all the time because i'm just because they've got because i've got my constant my constant is there it's safe it's pez 19 i can play that whenever i want i just chill and that's like my comfort food game maybe that's why i'm so like 
four changes and everything else. I don't know. It could be. I need to worry just to be that. Maybe. Sure, sure. I would still go back and play a bit of Dice Warriors sometimes. As is, I know. Maybe. It's one of those things. It's, uh, we all have, like, one of those things where you just, we, we will continuously go back and play. Yeah, I think the best way to look at it is comfort food. Yeah. That's not, I don't think that's a bad thing, but I do think it's something that. Hmm. I think it's something that is a slippery slope yeah. because I think as people get more used to the idea of. Oh, it all has to be the same, mm. you know. They start, they get tunnel vision, mm. and they can't accept anything that's slightly different, even if it might be better. Like I was a bit like that with Saints Row, if I remember. Like with Saints Row One to Three, they were all slightly the same. And when Four came out, I was like, no, fuck this. Really? <laughs> yeah, because just no. But looking back, I could probably, I'd probably enjoy it more. Nowadays, because I'm not in the middle of that, yeah, yeah. and I'm not just going, yeah, Saints Row, they're all cool. I'll probably be more open to change. I recently played Dragon, I mean, Breath of Fire, Dragon Core, a game that is completely different to everything in the series, and a lot of people rear off, me included as a kid, and it's like, I replay it, and it's like, wow, this is really, really yeah. fun. They tried a lot of really cool things here, and it gets, it just makes me a bit sad to see people down on a lot of these new and more interesting games because they're really set in the has to be the same as before mentality yeah. and i think we all are victims yeah of course ultimately course. um next up want to get into assassin's creed Odyssey? the question is are you going to stop me getting into this? no so it's it's <laughs> it's either this or spider-man for me for outright game of the year um I took a break from Assassin's Creed after uh, after Revelations. After Revelations, Re Revelations, played a bit of Black Flag, um, and then that was it. Really, um, the series got real stale. I loved the idea. I enjoyed the stories. Um, I loved the settings. Uh, as a history nerd, big into the settings, but the gameplay of it was 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 too too familiar for me to continue to care in any sort of significant way about it um then when origins came out i had a lot of interest in actually getting involved but it just wasn't the right time it wasn't the right time it just was like i wasn't in the right space to play an assassin i was like ah, not right now not right now this one came out and it sort of smacked me around the face um because it's so different from what came before but again, holds that like it's that thing I was saying about God of War is so different to the previous games in the franchise that I played, but still contains that core thing through middle, which which maintains its Assassin's Creed credibility, as it were. Um, and yeah, it, it's it's brilliant. It's surprisingly brilliant. Um, I have problems with it as I do Spider Man, but I think it's 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 a great 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 game. Um, and in fact, I put 140 hours into it to platinum it. Uh, it shows how much I like that game. I think it's brilliant. Yeah, I saw a comment from a very similar perspective as you. I remember playing the very first one back in 2007 <laughs> or so. Mm. And then, like, not enjoying that one too much. Well, I liked it, but it was like a solid 7. Second one came out and it blew the freaking doors up. I think Assassin's Creed 2 is the biggest example of, you know, well, it's it's similar to games where the sequel comes out and it just does everything better than the predecessor and it hits at the exact right moment and it it effectively turned Assassin's Creed into Ubisoft's number one money yeah. game. Like that's that's what they pump everything into. To the point where I look at the developer sheet for Assassin's Creed Odyssey and it's like there are so many branches of Ubisoft yeah. working on this game and the credits list is so ridiculously long that they, they go completely in on this and they've done it for a while um, and they started to become yearly after a while and I enjoyed it even back then because it was like I could always say cool end of the year very end of the year towards Christmas I'm gonna play an Assassin's Creed game I enjoyed the story from like Honestly, 
Assassin's Creed is probably a series that I could look at and go, they sort of brought in a rule set when it came to the law and the way that Animus worked and the way that they tried to yeah. say, this is how, it, this is why it's like this and you're not actually dying and desynchronizing. And they put a bunch of rules in that still stand up today. Mm -hmm. But it's like, as time went on, a lot of the magic of the series started to wane and wax a bit. I'd say by the time of four, they stopped really caring as much about that side of it and instead started to focus on what makes Odyssey great. And that's the whole, just the exploration aspect sure. of it. And going, the assassin side of it doesn't have to be focal point. Mm -hmm. We could try and experiment with other things. And it did really well. But 4 also signaled something in the series, which was, it wasn't the death of the previous series, but it was like, the things that you know and love about Assassin's Creed is not as important as it used to be. So before, like the first, I want to say from Assassin's Creed 1 to Brotherhood, Revelations, and 3, they're all very much about, we want to show you this historical location and put you in it. We want to talk to you about the lore and make it really interesting. We want to tie it into the modern day and make it really interesting. And it was for a large period of the game. Yeah. And before the, before the stream, I remember talking to you about how one of the things that I really enjoyed about the previous games was just the way they did free running and the way I could just go from rooftop to rooftop and late run in between buildings and then in free jumping on trees and stuff and I really enjoyed that sense of verticality and just free motion and um but as time went on they started to focus a bit less on the free motion with AC4 with um, Unity they tried to bring it back to what it was in 2 mm. I personally really like Assassin's Creed Unity a lot of people give that game mm -hmm. shit Syndicate I didn't enjoy because it felt like the Syndicate was for me the black sheep of the series. I just got bored of it. I don't really want to be in London. I live in London. Sure. Um, didn't really like the main characters. It was a bit too goofy. It was like, eh. Origins, I sort of skipped because of that. That was the very next game. Odyssey was coming out and I was like, they're fully committing to the idea of it being an RPG. And for the longest period of time, I've sort of looked at it as I put so much time into this that it's basically like an RPG. So them finally making that leap felt like a very obvious destination for them starting with to, since they've been going that way since Brotherhood mm. almost. And it's not it's and not then, a hardcore RPG in the sense that a uh, I don't know. Like it's not it's not really hardcore in it in its RPG tendencies, but it it, it it's just it attempts, Yeah, and it's the sort it of thing that like someone who plays a PC game would be like, that's not an RPG. And you're right, yeah, but, but it, what it does is it <laughs> takes the best bits of that and sort of like layers them in and, and emphasizes that exploration and, and, and ownership over your play style as well. There's no longer just one way to play as an assassin, as, as Assassin's Creed. You, you can change and do and play how you sort of want. And like, it takes the elements that it needs to, the RPG elements that it needs to, to create something genuinely great. And Unity sort of started that off. I think that's one of the things I liked about Unity a lot. Like the armor system that started in Unity and the whole, you could be stealthy, or you could do this, or you could do that based on what you're wearing. So it, it very much is a continuation of both Unity as well as 4. And it just does a lot of new things. Like the cult of, like we, both of us loved the Nemesis system in Shadow of War and Shadow of Mordor. Yeah. And they, rip that <laughs> completely like the same way shadow of war and shadow of mordor ripped the whole free running element ubisoft sort of brought it back with the whole we're going to take the teleporting assassination we're going to take the nemesis system and just put it mm. in and it's it works fine the mercenaries system i enjoy quite a bit except for later on in the game where it's a bit like uh but i still really do enjoy it but I think the thing I like the most about Assassin's Creed Odyssey is honestly the Cult of Cosmos system. Mm. Like that system, like it reminds me of Mafia, not Mafia 2. I keep Godfather 2. The Godfather 2, yeah. That came out last generation. Like early last generation where they had the idea of you have to fight this hierarchy of people and then you could only kill this person by doing these specific requirements. Yeah. And they sort of adapt it similarly in this, and it's just really fun because it gives you a, it gives you a reason to explore the world 
even though there's not something just straight away there and it just felt like oh cool I go to this land and it's like these guys have these problems and this is very different to this other island where these guys have these problems like in the very southern locations of the map there's a place with they're obsessed with what's it called um, the, the Minotaur they're completely obsessive as soon as you go on it there's this kid that Oh, that goes, it's, hey, you want to go on this tour? One of my favorite quests is just walking about with <laughs> yeah. that kid. He was like, the Minotaur is coming to town. <laughs> and then, like, you know you're going to fight one. And he's like, oh, will this lead to it? It doesn't. Something else leads to it. But, like, it's enjoyable. And then when you get to the Coliseum on that same island, it's like, oh, these are, this is this had a lot of interesting thought put, in, put into it. And they crafted the very good story in it and then when you get to the cult of cosmos system it's like hey things you do here actually have meaning later on other than just loot and experience yeah. you can actually take out one of these guys and it's like i like yeah. that i like the fact it doesn't tell you straight away what leads to what i love the fact it doesn't tell you how many sync points you've synchronized out of the overall percentage like the previous games does so it doesn't feel like i'm just going on a checklist you know it feels more like they're pushing you to explore rather than just finishing something just to get a completion percentage mm. completed, you know, which leads into a problem I have later on, but I will get into that. <laughs> but um, what do you think of the combat? Because that's the w one thing I probably am a bit iffy on. I was before played it and I still am now. Um, I enjoy it. I, I, I think it's... Yeah, I, I really enjoy it. I don't, I, I don't think it's anything particularly um, new. Uh, I think it, it takes, it takes a lot of cues from other games um, and makes it slightly heavier than old Assassin's Creed games. Like I remember, for example, in Assassin's Creed Two, and you don't have, and you don't have any weapons, you'd just be like spin punching like some sort of like next UFC guy who just doesn't know like when to stop and i think in this one it's a lot heavier and more deliberate um but i enjoy it and i think i enjoyed like i don't know i i really enjoyed the combat i don't think it's anything particularly new or special but i enjoyed it hmm i'm sort of i there's elements of it i like i love the whole fact you get all these abilities like the whole hey if no one sees you just throw a spare in their face and then not throw a spare in their face but assassinate yeah. them then if another guy comes just link to him then the next guy and then the next guy i love that as well as the few that's my favorite like, upgrade the... once you get like yeah. you can get it when you that's can do it like three or four times in a row and so like yeah, there's gone. like you I get those it. small like encampments where it's only like six people five people and you take like all of them out with just that chain <laughs> apart from one really and that good. one guy turns around and all of his mates are dead and you're like Rob, here we go let's go then fam <laughs> Yeah, I really enjoy that. I also really enjoy the forts. It reminds me of the really big, mm. like, one or two locations you get in the previous games where it's like, let's see if I could silently kill everyone in here and not be seen yeah. once. And that was fun back in the day, and it's still fun here. Um, the tombs I sort of don't particularly like mm. <laughs> because it feels like that's something that was lost in the previous Assassin's Creed games that I really enjoyed because... In the previous game, you used to have these little free-running mini, not mini games, but like trials you would go through where you're timed, and they have these interesting layouts for you to get to a particular really rare armor piece, and I enjoyed it because a lot of times you try it once, then try it another time, and then sometimes they had puzzle elements, and this doesn't have that, and, it's, and they haven't had that since Assassin's Creed, I want to say Revelations. Yeah, I think um, Revelations was the one that sort of killed the idea almost, but yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but I wanted to see that back with this one in Origins, but unfortunately it's just like a tomb with a cobra here and there, and a lot of spike traps. The, the snakes are the most annoying enemy in just, this game, I swear to god. Yeah. Because they're so small, and you don't really pay attention because they're there, and then... And then sometimes there's ropes around them that you go, oh no! <sighs> absolute stress absolute pure stress i swear to god yeah it's just just scrap those and give me back my old <laughs> ways of doing it plus you just get a skill point at the end it's like by the time you level 50 or whatever it doesn't matter but I, I, i'm just i'll get into that later but oh and sharks um, sharks are horrendous 
Sharks are gotcha. Sharks are the most sharks annoying thing in the world. You cannot cool. like. They're just like. The thing is, they did them all right in four. But they, I didn't they clock. I didn't them. clock until about 130 hours in. That you that you could kill them. Well, that you can shoot at them with arrows. Oh, I, I don't do that. I get a trident out. No, I, 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 I've been diving into trident. the sea and having a flipping fist fight. The shark, well, not fist fight, but <laughs> with a sword or whatever I'm using at the time. But, like, I didn't cook. You can just, like, float at the top of the water and just shoot arrows. And I was like, oh. Yep, you can use the ghost arrow as well, which is really fun. Yeah. That's my second favorite ability. Which I wish I'd done, because as I was going through one of the trophies, is to complete every underwater location. And the amount yeah, of sharks I had to too. deal with. I wish I'd learnt this earlier, because there's so many sharks. Yeah. But that I think that probably leads into my problem with the game. And that's from a complete from like a general just playing through it from start to end, it's really really good. But like ultimately the completionist in me sort of begins to creep in mm -hmm. and I start to think to myself, alright, I think it's time for me to decide whether I want to platinum and do hundred percent of this or not. Sure. And this game triggered it. <laughs> and it means that I have to go to every landmass. Mm -hmm. And the problem that also came up with Assassin's Creed 4 came up with this again. In that the world is too big and there's too much padding in it to really make you enjoy completing it. Mm -hmm. you know? it, it makes the final, say, 20, 30% of the game just feel like, oh, god damn it, it's another... It's another, it's another army encampment. Because I felt the it's same way about Spider-Man. I felt like they, there was obviously a lot less in Spider-Man than there was in this, but I felt like I was grinding in Spider-Man where I never felt like I was grinding in Assassin's Creed. I was I, agree there too. I was overwhelmed by how much there was in Assassin's Creed. And there were certainly days yeah. where it almost felt like I was going to a job because I was like, Jesus Christ, there's so much to do. Like, it was just like, oh, like just so, so much. But... I felt like at points in Spider-Man, I was actually felt like I was like grinding a bit, like going to do each of the different fists, like warehouses or whatever yeah. they were. Like, they they got a bit bad with that later on because it like instead of them doing two sets of it, just one set of them in Spider-Man. Later on, it was like there's two of them that you have yeah. to go through, and it's like, oh, okay, that's a bit that's a bit much. Yeah. But I'd say it just does it a lot. There's a lot less of them. Oh yeah, definitely, to, definitely, yeah. So it's like it's a much it's, it's a much smaller there. like the play area is a lot smaller, and so there's just yeah. naturally less of them. And in Assassin's Creed, like the play area is huge, but there's like these things just absolutely everywhere. Yeah, and it makes it hard to actually look at the map screen sometimes because it's like. Mm. I can't find shit because there's too much things around me. So I have to go to hide all the completed stuff. And even then it's like all these question marks. And I, I'm telling you this question mark here that I have to spend time getting to. I know exactly what it is. It's, a, it's an army encampment. Mm -hmm. It's an army encampment. Mm -hmm. You know it, I know it. And that ties into the thing that I don't like about the game. And that's I don't like the war system. Yeah. It just, it feels really, it feels like they put it in just to to have a reason for you to interact with Spartan armies and Athenian armies, but it's like, it's ultimately completely pointless. So what? Like you have- Sorry, go on. Red dudes and blue dudes, and no matter what happens, none of them are different from each other. Like if the red guys are in charge, you can't go into <laughs> their camps, even though you help them win, the, win that particular side of the war. The blue guys in charge, same thing. Um, getting into fights into the main clash between the two just leads to armor and a bit of experience. Sometimes a mercenary could be like, "Yeah, I'm on this side, fight me," and that's that's fine for a while. But after the third time I did that, I just didn't want to ever touch it again, and I don't. But it leads into the idea of this is the reason why they have. Athenian camps and Spartan camps everywhere and it's like you could just get rid of that and get rid of all those camps and it just it will flow better if you get what I mean yeah I disagree but I get I understand what you mean um I think for me like part of what makes that period of history so interesting is the war between the Peloponnesian war is a very interesting thing and so having them there sort of it is is part of the the context of the game 
and I think something like there are a lot of missions where like you'll be talking to someone and they're like oh we're going to need you to take out the leader of this specific uh, I was going to say borough but it's not boroughs that's London this specific yeah, basically the, yeah what, l- listen borough innit N- N4 I want you to take out someone in there. I need you to take out the leader of picking a random place Lesbos for example we need to take out the leader of Lesbos and it's like I think that actually adds more intrigue because you're seeing how it affect, like having having that information of not just it's a quest and then at the end the person goes oh cheers for doing that I appreciate it no there's a new leader there now and you can like weaken them to get to them to kill them and although like ultimately mechanically I think it's pointless and I agree with you and I don't think that it's needed I do think it adds like uh interesting context to it which I think the game would be lesser without it, in my personal opinion. Although I do agree, like, I agree, I basically I agree with what all you're saying, but I'm sort of happy it's there because it lends something more, it lends a more interesting angle to everything, as opposed to just doing something and then not seeing the consequences of those actions. Like, um, uh, I won't say something because of spoilers, but like, you know, there's like, like when you, for example, if you just go and kill a random leader, say a Lesbos, for example, if you go and kill the random leader of Lesbos, and then there's another leader, and you're like, oh man, I did that. That was me. That was me. All of a sudden, like, and then you do the conquest battle, and it's like, this is either Sparta or uh, Athens, and it's like, oh, okay, I am directly contributing to that. And although mechanically, it, I don't think it adds up to anything ultimately, I think it's just, it, it it's it's a small context that increase it's a small context that means makes things seem more important than they actually are in my opinion i the thing is i can i just i can't look at it more than mechanically in that situation because the leaders that it generates for example they're all just random yeah. it's like with the mercenary system they're all just random dudes uh, mercenaries at least have like some traits to them yeah, I, I I like I like watching, um, like reading about the mercenaries when they're like, oh, so and so was born here, and that's why he has a name. I actually took a screenshot where there was someone called um, Herpes the Flaming. Nice. I had a mercenary called Herpes the Flaming, and I had to screenshot it. Just, yes, but um, that's the only real problem I have with Odyssey is just that system because it just feels like it's. You're putting too much things into it at that point. I I think Assassin's Creed benefits more at this point to just take a lot of that padding yeah. out and just work with what you know you know works and just make it denser. Make it not not denser with flavorful padding, but dense with quests because the quests in this game were phenomenal. Yeah. Were really really good, as we both said before. And not just not radiant quest either. That's another thing that I don't like that much. The time things and the community things, but like actual quests <laughs> that you built and you placed around the map, and they have individual yeah. storylines of characters that aren't just going, Mister Yours, um, do this, and I'm like, drag me, and like yeah, then I do it, and I'm like Malakas, <laughs> then I get paid. Then I go off and do something else, and I was like, "This is just for experience." Like, I want to feel like the world is living somewhat, and the real quests let make the game feel like True. that. I, but, I think, like I say, I think the the, the war system, if we're going to call it that, of like each individual like place having individual leaders, which are ruled by Athens or Sparta, I think that adds to the world feeling more living than it would do otherwise. Um, but I, but I, I do agree with you. I do agree. Cosmos, if it helps, I think the cult of cosmos already does achieve that. Honestly, in my opinion, the uh, the idea yeah. of guys behind the scenes that you have to build up to, and it's like this island affects that island, and that island affects that island, and this person in this island is in charge of finance for all of this. You have to take them down. Mm-hmm. That is for me. I much prefer that than just red guys are in charge. Now blue guys are in charge, yeah. and. Even if I don't interact with them, they're going to flip anyway, just between each other. Yeah. And there's very little difference between them. Like, if I could actually flip Athens, I'd be like, oh, Sparta, I'd be like, yeah. sure. But I mean, and if it helps you, you don't have to complete every single location to get the Platinum Trophy. 
Oh, I know that. I just, but... I just want to, I just want to, I just, I feel like, you know, sometimes <laughs> where you see someone doing something and you feel like you have to step in, but you know, they might want to do that thing and that's fine. But I feel like I'm going to sleep better at night if I tell you that. And yet you still go on your mad completionist like rampage. And then I can sleep easy knowing, do you know what I tried? I let him know. He knows now, like it, now everything past that is just, it's, it's your own doing it. Even if you warn me, it's gonna oh, I'm aware, I'm aware. <laughs> Ah, but it's a great game. Um, would it be up for my game of the year? I think it would be if this year I didn't play God of War. And, I mean, um, uh, yeah, I, I, it, I think it is for me because I haven't played God of War Red Dead 2. The two, the two biggest, the, the, potentially, potentially, but the two biggest outstanding games I haven't played yet. The two huge tentpole, like, game changer games I haven't, haven't played yet. Plus, just due to the padding, I put Spider-Man. I would say this, it, it's my favourite Assassin's Creed game now. Yeah, definitely. It goes, my Power order now goes, uh, it goes Assassin's Creed Odyssey first, Shadow of Mordor second, and then Assassin's Creed Brotherhood. Brotherhood was so good. That was my first. Then one, then two. But yeah, I, I, it's, it's a, it's, yeah, it's brilliant. And it's me, it's reinvigorated my like interest in the franchise in a big way. Like when the next one eventually gets announced whenever that happens to be, I would be very interested to see what they do. I wouldn't have to scrap them one day. For the long time. It's, it's interesting it's because really it's one of those it's things where like I don't think it's needed at all anymore. At the beginning it lended I think it but I do think it's something it's interesting because it lends a different Is dynamic it even... to it. But go on. It doesn't anymore. It used to be so good and then like after three the story arc is done, but they don't know what to I do think that it. story arc is done. It's one of the things it. I didn't like about this one, not having played Origins, is I don't know what the hell the story arc is going in the modern day thing. Because, like, the woman you play as in the modern day, but it's Layla Hassan, exists in Origins. Yeah, in but, like, I didn't play that, so I was a bit lost in this one. But uh, it's interesting. I think it. Apparently, even people who play the Origins, it's like they start Odyssey and it's like, wait, why are we here? What's going on? Like even they're confused. So it's like they're not doing a good. They haven't done a good job with the modern day since free. I because I, I always I always like... assumed back in the day that it was building up to just a modern Assassin's Creed. Like and that would that would have that. been like in my head that was like the I wouldn't have played it though. Well, because that's what and then and then when they announced Watch Dogs, my big bet was secretly that it was actually just going to be an Assassin's Creed game. And I still and I still think Watch Dogs is basically just an Assassin's Creed game, just without any it Assassin's. Was. It's stuff. in the same universe. I know, but just without any of the Assassin's Creed stuff in it. Like, but you you basically play an assassin. But um, I don't know. It, take it or leave it, really, innit? Like, just get rid of it. There's, it's, there's no point for it. Like when they take you out of the game and go, hey, look, you're back with Layla. I'm like, so I could read emails. You took me, <laughs> you took me out of where I was to read emails and get lost. For me, the the modern day bit in this one, there's one particular moment in the modern day bit of this one that I really liked. The rest of it I could have got rid of quite happily and not been bothered. But for that one moment to mean something, I would have need the rest of it to be fair. But like, yeah, there's one, and if people who have finished it will know what I'm talking about. Um, you might even know what I'm talking about. I don't know. I'm not going to say it I for fear of spoilers, do. but something about a staff. I, I mean, staff exist. Okay, yeah, I think I know. There's one specific yeah. moment. But even with that, even with that though, I can't. No, again, and that's what I mean. Fine. You should get rid of the rest of it, but you need the rest of it to make that bit feel like meaningful. But. I don't know. It's it's it's. Uh, I sort of just want a modern day one just to see what it would be like. But I don't think you can make a modern day what, world. Automatic guns. Well, I, and also I don't think you can make a modern day Assassin's Creed world right now. I don't think we have the technology to, like, imagine imagine instead of London in the industrial era, imagine London now as an Assassin's Creed place. I don't think it works. They can choose a borough, really. True. They can choose one True. borough. <laughs> like, honestly, Syndicate was quite dense. Like, I, they could do it with their current engine. It would just take time. Plus, they don't need to fully realize it. And I think it would be a problem if they did, because it will lead into the whole padding yeah. problem. Yeah. And it's too big again. Just make it dense, man. Make it dense and small. And give me stuff to do. Don't make me travel for ages. 
Speaking of which, we should get into probably what a lot of people consider their favorite game of the well game of this year, Red Dead Two, because we've been on this for a while. I, I know, and I could go on about it for a lot longer than it's that. A good, it's a good game. I mean, the fact now you haven't played Red Dead. 2 The yet. fact that it's kept me away from Red Dead Two shows how good I think Assassin's Creed is. So. Cause you bought it and then you borrowed it to a friend and then yeah i lent i lent i lent i bought so i borrowed assassin's creed from someone when they went on holiday and when they came back it was just after red dead came out but i was so into assassin's creed that i lent them red dead redemption specifically so i could continue to play assassin's this creed mania. I, I, is that, I, I think it's that good um this mania. so so you finished red dead now yeah, yeah. where would this you say it's better or worse than the original it's better than the original, definitely. Um, by far. And I know you, I know you hear me say that, and then go, then how is it not your game of the year? It's because no. Uh, listen, I Red we Dead. all heard the noise you made when God of War came up. It was an excited <laughs> squeal, so we know what that is. Even without that, though, Red Dead Redemption One was in my top three video games of mm. all time. That's how much I loved Red mm -hmm. Dead Redemption One. But it's like Red Dead Two does when i look at rockstar and i look at their two flagship titles that they've established now so you have two titles you have gta which is in your face parody of america yep. and i love that i've loved that since i was a child i still do i probably will when i'm in my 40s sure. but red dead is something that came out it's a sequel to Rev it came out it was a sequel to red Dead revolver which was a fine game on the ps2 mm -hmm. But it decided to take the whole idea of you know, it's like it looked at what Assassin's Creed did, where it's like let's go to a historical location and let's fully realize it, and it did it even better than what Assassin's Creed ever yeah. did with Red Dead Redemption One, and it did it with perhaps one of the most likable characters in video gaming, in John Marston, who, as I've said before, I like average people. John Marston's a very average yeah. guy. He's just he's, he's quite normal. Well, that's guy. the thing is he's he's, and... he's very extraordinary in. His, his abilities and are. his sto and his backstory, but when we meet him and everything going forward it is very much from the perspective of a normal guy who wants a normal life. He's not. He's the flip. Yeah. He's the flip of most. Not to get too much into Red Dead One because that game came out like eight years ago. Jesus Christ! But like, he's the exact opposite of most video game protagonists. The vast majority of video game protagonists want to be the extraordinary. He is the extraordinary wanting to be ordinary. He wants to be a normal, yeah. everyday person. He just wants to live his normal, everyday life. And I think that's one of the reasons why that game is so good. And a lot of people cried at the end of it. I almost put her up at the end of that game. But going from that, you could. I used to think to myself, how are they going to top John Marston? Mm. You know? And like. Before the release of Red Dead 2, you barely ever learn anything about Arthur. Like, main character of that of Red Dead 2 is called Arthur Morgan, yeah. and you barely learn anything about him. And before it was released, I think Rockstar did that on purpose. And a lot of people were like, we don't know if we will live to John. He far surpasses John in terms of how I feel about him as a character. Far surpasses him. And it's like you care about not just him, but the entirety of Dutch's <laughs> gang. Um, Assassin's Creed 3 had a specific way of doing, not base building, but they had a base that you were in and you sort of cared about everybody, all the NPCs in that base. Yeah. And they were all, they all had specific stories and personalities that you got used to and it's like, oh, I, this is quaint. I, I sort of like this. I see what you're trying to do. Red Dead 2 fully realizes that with Dutch's gang and it's like, the way it all flows together is extraordinarily natural and the conclusion is again heartbreaking and it leads into Red Dead 1 perfectly but here comes the problems I have with Red Dead Redemption 2 I think Red Dead like this year the same year Kingdom Come Amla came out and as I said before it's them going hey let's make a very realistic game it's like it's real life in video games somehow Rockstar did even better with Red Dead 2 than sure. that everything every the person who decided to design all the animations and put all the systems in has an absolute obsession with realism mm. to the point where you have to sort of look at it and go is it worth it to make this so realistic and so lifelike and so simulatory that 
points it detracts from the experience of enjoyment because yeah. it does at times like it's not too egregious but like it's multiple little things that you look at and go come the fuck on man yeah <laughs> just just let me do this or just let me do that it, it's weird because like, obviously awful. i haven't played it but from people for example you and the person i lent red dead to to and uh, other people i know who have been playing it it's, it, it reminds me of a lot of the reaction that uh, people had when GTA 4 came out. Yeah, I remember saying this Which too. is just that, that sort of like, ah, oh, it's, it's more realistic and more plodding and like the way the systems work is very uh, uh, obtuse in its realism. Yeah. But with GTA 4, it still had a lot of the gaminess to it even still so it was never really that much of a problem but with red dead 2 it's like they want you to appreciate this world mm. like they want you to love this world and you do like there are things like you'd be riding along and then a storm would start and then arthur would just duck that he'd hunch down a bit on his horse and then his hair would very realistically blow in the wind and then you'd see streaks of lightning and then the rain will come down and then the horse would react and you're like, Jesus Christ, this is unbelievable. Mm. It's so visually stimulating and so realistic. And it, it's sometimes you just sort of look at the game while playing it and go, it's not the prettiest game this gen, but it's the most alive game this sure. gen. But it hurts it the same way that, you know, it helps it. and. It feels like Rockstar gonna continue going down that path and I do like a lot of that but it's the opposite of Assassin's Creed Odyssey mm. like you know the problem I had where it felt like everything in Assassin's Creed Odyssey after a certain point was padding sure, yeah. nothing in Red Dead Redemption 2 feels like padding nothing mm. not, nothing in it feels like padding it just feels like hey if you're here you could do this or you could do that if you want to we're not gonna keep track of any of it. Like, I remember when they brought in the Strangers and Freaks missions back in GTA 4, and they've steadily expanded upon that. It's at its best, best in this one. The gun plays at its best. Bull, um, Dead Eye is great to use still. Hunting has been expanded upon so much. There are so many systems upon systems on this game that I look at and go, this is a fucking masterpiece and will be looked upon in a few years is perhaps by, by gaming historians is the greatest video game of all time when you look at just the amount of stuff yeah. in it because it is from a technical perspective perhaps the greatest video game of all time and i know that's a big quote but it's like the amount of stuff in it is staggering and it all works together in such a good way but the way that they slow you down, the way that they, the way that they put their story at times before your enjoyment, the way that they put mechanics, you know, and animations in front of your enjoyment, yeah. it wears on you sometimes, and it makes you feel like, okay, I need to stop playing this for a while. I'll come back to you. Like it, it's a phenomenal. It's a ten out of ten game. But like most 10 out of 10 games, I know that's weird to say, there are problems, there are problems with it. It would be my game of the year. It's just, God of War is more than that. God of War does things better than that. Not, like, overall I'd say Red Dead Redemption 2 as a cohesive game is better than God of War. But like, there's just individual things that it does that I had problems with. God of War didn't have any problems. I had no problems with anything in that game. It just all worked and all felt like they played this for ages and they cared about telling the story and delivering a great experience just as much as they cared about you having fun with it, you know? Yeah. Like, it's a, it's, a, it's a phenomenal game. It's just, it wasn't my game in the year this year. <laughs> any other year it would be. Any other yeah. year. Any other year this generation. It, would be it's just god of War's my game of the generation it might even be my game of the decade 
for Red Dead 2's. Yo, it's fantastic. Yeah, I, I'm really looking forward to playing it. I eventually do. Um, like, I, I, the only reason I've not yet is because I feel like I needed a break from massive open world games with horses after playing so much of Assassin's Creed Odyssey that I felt like if I jumped straight into Red Dead 2, it would be a bit much for my system to to deal with. So I've so I've broken it up with you know, little sprinklings of super hot, little sprinklings of roundabout. I've been playing FIFA 70 today, so you know, changing it up a lot. But I think it's one of those things where every Rockstar game that comes out will always be, or every Rockstar developed game uh, is almost unfair to compare it to other games because of the amount of money they put into it, because of the amount of effort they put into it, because of the amount of people who work on it. It's almost unfair to compare it to other things. Um, but uh, yeah, I find it pretty amazing that uh, you would consider anything to be on its level, um, let alone surpass it in God of War. I, th I think that's a huge, huge uh, compliment for God of War, especially because, again, those games were so good on PS2 and PS3, but they were very much hack and slashes and the story and everything about it was second best. And, and it, so it never quite got to the level it could have. And the fact that they've got there now is, is, is a huge achievement. But this isn't me shitting on Reddit. No, 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 of course no, it's not. Yeah. And again, like you say, you can have a 10 out of 10 and still think there are things wrong with it. You know what I mean? My favorite TV show of all time yeah. is Parks and Recreation, but I feel like there are problems with that. You know, my favorite game is, I've got my favorite, one of my favorite games is Fable 2, but I'm well aware there are problems with Fable oh. 2. Like, so you can, you can love something and think it's a 10 out of 10 and still think there are issues with it. The thing that worries me about Red Dead 2 and to a degree GTA 5 is something or the things that happen afterwards um, I know you hate the games of the service model I do as well and it feels like with GT Online Rockstar has sort of they know what they saw they understand the idea of releasing a game now and then maintaining its life with an online mode that is very grindy that you know, a lot of people jump yeah. into and it will keep them afloat and because of that they're not looking to make games you know within that period of time like the gap between red dead 2 no red dead 2 and gta 5 is actually really big there's been five years between rockstar releases sure. and compared to last gen where we would get like not yearly but like every other year you'd get like gta 4 and you get the gta 4 episodes which are single player then you'd get was it Red Dead next? It was even, no, it was Max Payne 3, then you get LA Noir, then you get Red Dead, then you get GTA 5. Wasn't it Red like, Dead, LA Noir, Max Gen. Payne 3? It was in some order. But even like then, that, LA Noir wasn't just, really Rockstar developed. Yeah. But yeah, no, I, I get what you're saying, yeah. And it just, it just really <laughs> felt like they were hitting it out of the park each time, trying new things. And like, they still that old, but they were trying new things. After GTA 5, they sort of went, whoa, this is making a ton of money. Um, all right, we'll just ride this, and then our next big thing will be Red Dead 2. And Red Dead 2 was five years later, and I get it, it's a generational leap, so new systems and they have to get used to all these things. But I don't see what the next Rockstar game will be. Like, even Dan Houser said that he doesn't see GTA 6 for ages just because of the political climate right now. That's sort of what I want, I, just... I, I like, I get it, and I think what's the bigger shame for me is losing um, the single player DLCs. Because although we only saw them fully in action, well, probably once or twice, twice probably if you include uh, in in our Dead Nightmare and in um, uh, episodes, yeah. and, um, episodes from Liberty City, lost all of the the lost, lost and Damned, Battle of and the other one. Um, they were the best pieces of the OC. But been. that's the thing. Like I feel like that's a shame that we've lost that because of it. But I'm almost happy that now what they've developed is a way of there they seem or at least so far seem to be very aware that the part of the attraction of those games is just having these ungodly massive single player experiences that are uh, very very just perfectionist very clean very dumb and busted like this is a single player experience and they seem to have found a way of then just basically attaching a multiplayer to that 
which almost acts as a secondary game, which they can just cash develop from, almost like Steam in the background with Valve. Like, it's just cash being generated in the background, which they don't have to pay so much attention to, to where it, it, it takes away resources from their next thing until they get to the point where like, right, sweet, our next one is ready and they can just drop it and it be this huge thing and it just goes And yet it's still the core experience that you get is still that core single player like experience, not because the big the big worry you're going into this was that this was going to be a multiplayer game because how of how successful GTA Online is. Where what they seem to have been able to do is separate the two and have it, like you say, as an online mode that exists that generates money for them, but that seems to allow them the space and the time to just develop something huge. I think losing those DLC things is a shame. Um, if we've lost them forever, I don't know. We'll see what happens. But that is a shame for me. But um, you know, I, I would want to see a bully too. I want to see. You know, that's that's the big. I want to see something I like that. I want to see a new warriors or a manhunt or something completely yeah. new, like agent. But it feels like that five year gap was mostly because, of, well, part of it was definitely because they were developing Red Dead Two. But they have a lot of studios, and they showed before they could consistently try out different franchises and then incorporate things from this franchise into this franchise and make it all feel fresh. You know and like that five year gap you didn't have anything from rockstar for a while and i don't know if we're gonna have anything from rockstar till the next gta or perhaps maybe if we get a bully too which kill for. but um... i would be shocked if we didn't see i would be shocked if we didn't see a uh, not gta or not red dead redemption ip between now and gta 6 i'd be pretty shocked i think it's a possibility but i I would be surprised, given Rockstar's track record, that that might not exist. Be it a whole well, new IP, again, be it years. a development of another one, be it whatever it is, I would be shocked if it didn't, if we didn't see something. But you, you I mean, the five years thing is, is 100% true, five but you have to remember it's not one team. Like, Rockstar, as even just the yeah, Rockstar development teams. house as itself, has maybe six or seven different teams. And then you have like... The San Diego, North, you have tons um, and then few. you have tons and tons of them and then there's like like uh elena war wasn't even developed by rockstar it was developed by someone who later became into a rockstar thing but that was um yep. team bondi or whatever they were called the ones who were in australia like i <sighs> i would be shocked if but we didn't see something to, the reason why i look at it that way is take two on yeah. them and i sort of look at take two i look at ea i look at ubisoft and it's like they're all sort of looking at it from the aspect of do we have to keep on producing the single player stuff red dead redemption 2 you look at it and it's like no they care about single player and they care about delivering these experiences but i don't know if take two would allow them to constantly take these risks and put out all these new things and instead just go okay this is gonna be gta and then there's gonna be a gap then red dead then gta then red dead I think Rockstar are potentially in danger of becoming that and I think they would lose a lot if that becomes what if they do become that yeah maybe I, I don't disagree I don't disagree is long I don't disagree um I like wouldn't I, I, but I, I wouldn't be sad if that happened is what I'm trying to say maybe like because we still i still get the things that i think are best which are those single player core experiences that they develop um it's just that everyone else in the world seems to be happy with the stuff they do in between as well the thing is is that i think it's so if they were to do that i i look at developers like naughty mm -hmm. dog and sony and santa monica and it's like they are beginning to match what rockstar is sure. doing and the big reason why Rockstar became as good as they became is because they made the mistakes. You know, they made the multiple games in the PS2 era. They made multiple games in the PS3 era to make the masterpieces later on. And it's like, I think if they made games in between GTA 5 and Red Dead 2, some of the things that I get slightly annoyed at with Red Dead 2, they would have been able to go, no, we could do this differently because it's a bit too realistic we tried it in this one let's do it a bit differently here huh? you know they have 
something that they could look at and say, let's learn from that. You know, they had that leading up to GTA 5. That's why GTA 5 was so fucking unbelievable. And it's like, there's not much you could really look at in that game and go, this is a small annoyance or this is a small annoyance. With Red Dead 2, it feels like the small annoyances didn't really have to be there if they had something that they could learn from, if you get what I mean. So it's like five years that's just gone by where they've only had GT Online to really sort of learn okay. from. And I also feel like their tentpole is very much GTA though. Like the GTA games are like, if you look at their releases, they're the milestones of Rockstar. And if you look between four and between five, you can very clearly see the milestones building towards five. Like you, like yeah. f- like four's gunplay is horrendous compared to fives, and in between there they had Max Payne, which you was Payne 3, a solely which like gunplay like system, thing, which built GTA into 5. GTA's five gunplay. And I think <sighs> what we see, <sighs> I don't feel like they're in any more danger than they were previously. I would be more concerned if this came out and was a multiplayer thing. I think the fact that people can match it on experience is very good but no one can still make a rockstar game rockstar games are still very much their own separate beast i think as much as i think last of us is better than red dead redemption i see them as two separate experiences i don't see them as similar in any way shape or form and i i I think rockstar still develops something that's very very unique compared to everyone else um yeah i i would agree with you i would have agreed with you a while ago but i think God of War sort of is an example of a developer meeting that pedigree that Rockstar yeah and it's like if Sony Santa Monica could could do that and it's like all the other devs are also doing that it's like they're all meeting that and they will all at a certain point get to Rockstar's level sure but what's the difference what's the difference in time scale between God of War 3 and God of War it's it's, it's longer than it's, still, it's a lot it's long. but then you have to but then you also have to look at like this sony santa monica is is almost like just looking at rockstar no you know you have to look at sony if you're going to compare it like if you look at sony and compare them to rockstar and then look at all their releases if you get what i mean because rockstar Maybe. isn't just yeah i guess it's just rockstar north if you get what i mean true but I, there's less syn- there's less like synergy between them like rockstar north Rockstar, San Diego, Rock Studies, all sort of work together, whereas the Sony studios are independent studios of each other in a lot of ways. Like Santa Monica will bleed into other ones to help out here and there, but they're not uh completely they're not they're not merged like Rockstar are. Like any Rockstar product that gets comes out has at least like three different Rockstar studios there's, working on it. Yeah, there's time. a there's a ton of cross contamination yeah. of yeah. Rockstar. But I I, it still makes me look at them and take a step back and go I think you guys need to think about how how they're going to release the next games and what games they choose to release and I'm still worried about the idea of them going another five years after Red Dead and then getting GTA because you know you, you run into the Bethesda problem where it's like you know Skyrim then Fallout and Elder Scrolls and Fallout and Elder Scrolls and Fallout yeah you know, fair. It, you lose a lot of the like when I said Capcom has the greatest library of all time it's because they take risks and you know sometimes it doesn't pay off but Rockstar would lose a lot if they start just sure but again you if, know, you're, if you're going that far you have to talk about Take 2 as a whole as opposed to just Rockstar and you look, start to look at like Borderlands and the things Gearbox are producing and the things all the other Take Two studios are producing, but that's a fair comment. I mean, and I also think this conversation is uh, is is it happens now because we've just had a Rockstar game. In five years' time, this conversation is very different. If there's no, let's say Rockstar don't release a game between now and in five years, and they release GTA Six in five years' time, it's a very different conversation because in five years' time, we're ready for another Rockstar game. Whereas now we're not, obviously. So it's a very different conversation. And I, I agree with you. I, there's, there's, it's a very, it, the, the interesting thing about the way Rockstar works is because there is such a long time between their releases, like Red Dead, Red Dead Redemption was eight years ago compared to now, I think it came out in 2010. And so there's so much time that industry completely changes between sequels to franchises. Between, even between four, uh, GTA 4 and GTA 5, which was nowhere near as long as that, 
the, the industry completely changed again and then between five and six it will change again like there will almost probably be a console generation leap between gta 5 and gta 6. like it'll, it'll go from ps3 when it came out on gta 5 to probably ps5 and it's it's an interesting it, it's they seem to have figured out a formula for now to be able to be consistent within that it's interesting to me how they develop further but we'll see i guess um yeah give me give me table tennis too that's what i want in my life <laughs> i want bully oh yeah i, I mean yeah. obviously i want bully too but i would i would kill children for bully too <laughs> that's what you do in bully to be spawned Actually, you know, they never yeah. die to be fair but yeah no i would love that you um, want to talk about but... open worlds which are small but dense bully bully is fantastic bully i want to say nl you could piss off with your <laughs> bully coverage <laughs> Sorry, I got, I got. At M, at M, at M now. At you know, in this hate for bully, but yeah, but I, that's probably what I would like to see next. Um, would I like to see another Red Dead? The thing is, I don't know if I would, believe it or not. Mm. As much as I love the series, I don't think I want to see another Red Dead Redemption. Same way that I could say I don't know if I want to see another GTA. Like I wouldn't mind seeing a GTA set in Vice City in modern day, but it's like. I just want to see them revisit some of the other stuff a bit more because I think there's not much else you can do with these to yeah. be honest with you at least for, for my they, they can do like I know they probably can and they'll prove me way fucking yeah, wrong course. but I'm very interested in seeing them do to some of the other franchises what they did with Reddit Redemption you know because Reddit Redemption is such a big jump from Revolver mm -hmm. I care more about the diversity than like them polishing something for so many years and then getting it finally because as I said Red Dead Redemption 2 is probably the greatest technical video game of all time it's just uh, that... PES 19 <laughs> you're in a real PES PES is good <laughs> but yeah I think we've gone on too long we've gone on way 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 well, too when long don't, when don't we go on too long Jesus Christ. Fucking editing. Oh! <laughs> Luckily, this doesn't have to go out soon. I could just take the yeah, time with to I think, to, so, so to answer the question from earlier, um, Spider-Man is my game of the year. Uh, it, Assassin's Creed runs it incredibly close. Um, unbelievably close. Uh, but I would just pip Spider-Man ahead of it. But again, that's knowing I haven't played every single game from this year. Knowing that I haven't played Red Dead 2 yet. Knowing that I haven't played God of War yet. Knowing that I haven't played Hitman 2 yet, which will no doubt for me be up there. Um, knowing how much I adore Inspire. Hitman and Inspire, of course. So there's, there's there's things in there that I haven't played yet that I really, 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 really want to. Um, but Spider-Man would be the answer to that question. Hmm. All right. Anything else you're looking forward to this year that's not out yet? Um, that's not out yet. Not that I know of. I don't even know if anything interesting is coming out now. Smash? Uh, like I said, I don't know if anything interesting is coming out. <laughs> <laughs> is Smash really um, coming well, out this late? Yeah, it's coming out in a few is days. It? Well, of course yeah. it is. It got leaked like a week or something. Then. Yeah. Honestly, Nintendo Switch has had a shit year this year. Mm. Really bad year. The only thing that I'm really interested... I got Let's Go Pikachu. And it's like, it's fine. I don't hate it as much as I thought I would. It, there's things about it I sort of like. Bro, what but... about the Snorlax animation? The one when you run and he like hold <laughs> you and just like whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> But like it does make me interested in the next Pokemon game. But I gotta tell you, man, Nintendo's had a shit year this year. <laughs> Last year the year was great. This year's like, uh... I'm actually interested in the next Gears of War. Gears of War 5 looks interesting to me. Yeah. The first Gears that's looked interesting is the first one. <laughs> yeah, I liked 2. Past 2, it was a bit... Yeah. And I know there's a lot of story there that I could be like... <gasps> but, uh, I don't know. There's, no, there's nothing interesting coming out for me for the rest of the year. Um, I just don't care about Smash, so that's just the thing. But, like... Um, <sighs> we'll see. Like I said, there's a couple of things that I need to get to anyway. Um, like and things that are off the beaten track that I need to get to, like Hitman 2. 
um, which I will no doubt love and will say is better than any game ever because it's Hitman. So, overall though, big year, big hits. It's kind of crazy that, like I said, you can make the argument that Red Dead Redemption 2 is not the best game of the year. Yeah, that's a big call. And the fact that Monster Hunter World and Spider Man can come out and then like. Get yeah, it, it's a huge call and a really uh, surprising one. What about next year? I'm looking for the days going. Uh, Pez, Pez 20. More than I ever have before, honestly. Um. Sure, what is even coming out next year? Possibly Last of Us 2 or Ghost of Tsushima. One of them. I don't know which one. Last of Us would be a big deal to me. I think Last of Us 2, whenever it comes out, just will be game of the year for me. Um, despite not wanting it, I think it will be. What else is coming out? Uh, I don't know. Let me have a look. Let me have a look. Days Gone? That's what I'm interested in more than anything. I'm mildly else. interested in Days Gone. Like, my interest was zero, and it's just sort of increased as time has gone on. I've thought about it more, and it's like, oh, this is this might be unique. There's a Death May Cry coming out next year. <gasps> okay, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you just caught myself. Oh, oh, but in, and in the same way, I'm very, very excited for Resident Evil 2, and that's gonna be a yeah. big thing for me. It's gonna be a bit. Oh, it's gonna be a good. Th- January's just a strong time for me because we're in the twos. Uh, Metro, the new Metro game looks really good. Metro Exodus. I haven't actually tried any. Of you them. never played a Metro game? You should give them a yeah. shot, man. They're good. I understand. I- are they like? Are they like Dead Space? Because Dead Space is my jam. Mildly Dead Space E. They've got. It's a similar sort of like low bobbling like horror vibe to it. It's like. It's a bit more subtle than Dead Space is. Dead Space can be very in your face, but it's also not as um, horror based. But it is very, very good. I'd, I'd, I'd recommend trying them. You can get those. P- you can get the PS4 collections, which are pretty good. Um, I might give it a try. What else is coming out next year? Cyberpunk, probably. Nah, Cyberpunk ain't next year. There's I no have... way Cyberpunk comes next year. It might. It might. That's honestly, it looks. If it does come next year, I'm not really as. I, I do like some of the things they're doing in it, but I need to see. I'm not there yet, Cyberpunk. I'm not yet. Yeah, it looks a bit too Borderlands-y to me for me right now. Uh, <laughs> As a, we've had the discussion. Yeah, of course. I mean, we've spoken about it many, many a time. Team Sonic Racing, that's my jam. Um, my mate, jam. this is trying to tell me Shenmue 3 is coming out next year, which is just isn't. Uh, Bloodstained is what I'm looking for. Yeah, Bloodstained next year. I've been looking forward to that for years now, and it's not yet. But the actual that was one of the games I liked this year. They had a eight bit. Yeah, that was supposedly amazing. Yeah, and that was yeah. solid. That was really fun. It was it was really good. Oh, Luigi's Mansion Three. That's a big one for me. I love Luigi's Mansion. Oh, the Medieval remake comes out next week. Oh, I forgot about that. Yes, boys. Yes, the Medieval remake. Did you ever play Medieval? Oh. No, but I played him in PlayStation All Stars. Oh, I was playing that the other day on my Vita. What a game! <laughs> That's a banging game. Uh, what else we got? Psychonauts Two comes out next year, which is very, very exciting for me. Um, Beyond Good and Evil. I think that's I don't know if that is next year. It's not on this list I'm looking at potentially, but again, I don't. I don't, again, my brain saying 2020 for that because it's so early on. Like so early. And possibly the new Wolfenstein. Rage 2 is another one. Wolfenstein Youngblood. Uh, what else have we got? That could going to be quite good, actually. We're seeing. It's, it's, it's weird because there's not a lot of massive hitters announced yet. But again, we're in this weird stage now where we're right at the end of a generation, supposedly. Um, and so we'll see yeah. what actually happens. So a lot of them would have to come out next year or very early in the year after. So we're in an interesting space to see what will happen. Oh, Kingdom Hearts 3 as well. Got that. Yeah, so we're in an interesting space. We'll see what happens. E3 isn't going to be that big because of Sony, so we'll see what happens. It's it's an interesting year. I think even without E3, Sony's going to show off PS5 next year, most likely. That would be the biggest reason then, I think. That's the rumor. That's the rumor. Plus, the amount of next-gen talks we had recently is like... Yeah, we'll probably see them 
I don't know. I don't think it will be released. Any of them will be released next year, but we'll most likely see them. Unless I get Crash Team Racing, that'd be crap. <laughs> All right, guys, that should be it for our 2018 wrap up and review. And I feel 2019 just ran for way longer than I thought. Yeah. And we both mean what's the approach. Yeah. 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 So, <laughs> see you guys on the next. What do we call these discussions? Oh, I don't know. Something. Yeah, this, this, is the, this is the end of this year's discussion group, I guess. The next one might be. I don't know. Maybe. At some stage. At some stage. But, I'll see you guys later. Peace Bye. out.